you, you said something that was really profound um, when I was here last. Um, you compared Tesla's uh, hardware circuit boards to what you have seen in, in defense and mm -hmm. fighter, fighter jets. Can you expound on that? Uh, well, not without showing examples, I guess, but, uh, <laughs> but at the end of the day, if you look at um, if you look at flight controllers and whatnot for super planes, um, super jets, uh, then like I mean military kind of things, you see a, a level of um, microelectronics that you don't see even in cell phones. Mm -hmm. um, the comparison was in general. There are things that uh, that we we work on lots of military kind of things. They're hanging. Some of them are hanging on a wall. We have a we worked with, um, um, I think it was Raytheon, on the uh, Excalibur, okay? You fire that bullet, kind of, out of a, it's a 155. You fire it out of the cannon, and it goes so far, about 56 kilometers or whatever, and then it turns into, a, uh, well, it turns into a rocket first. Then, at about 50, 56 kilometers, that's its range limit. And then it'll seek out a target, make a right angle turn, go through a window, and hit a pie plate. That that requires a, a lot more uh, computing power than you could believe. And inside is uh, you know cryogenic units and stuff like that. something to make it so it's freezing cold in there, so that these things don't uh, they don't uh, blow up or what have you. Th that kind of stuff. Um, and they also have chemical batteries too. But that, that kind of stuff is not what I would have expected to see inside of a car. But when we started tearing it apart, uh, <laughs> prior to our president saying we can't work with Huawei anymore, we were working with Huawei mm -hmm. and ZTE. Um, and um, uh, they moved from uh, Apple level um, cell phones to something that I would say would be the next uh, step change. Mm -hmm. Maybe not to the point where you could use it for, um, super you know, computing. Uh, super computing. <laughs> but but it was it, it was definitely a step change and it took forty percent of the cost out. Uh, I think that uh, I think that um, if you sit too long, and that's what I think all of the industries in the United States are doing. They're just sitting too long, um, and uh, and not paying attention to what's going on next. You're gonna you're gonna get into you know, you're going to be behind the curve, and uh, Tesla proved that you can take a lot of the circuit boards that we have now and uh, basically squeeze them into one IC, uh, uh, one chip, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, and the only way you can make that happen is if you have internal R and D. You can't. Nobody's going to make that for you, uh, not to the degree you want it. And you were talking about uh, vertical integration. As far as I'm concerned, uh, the pendulum has swung way too. Okay, so you've seen the Ford was making its own rubber and glass. That wasn't probably the world's best uh, and smartest move. Um, but now you see the pendulum has swung in the other direction to where, you know, you've got a lot of people in the automotive world that, uh, or the automotive, um, yeah, the automotive management or whatever, or leadership that says, and the only thing we really need to do is we'll make a badge and stick it on the end of the car at the end of the line made by somebody else. That's that's ridiculous. Uh, Tesla has probably um, hit a sweet spot uh, for the most of the car, not for the body, yeah. but hit a sweet spot on vertical integration. Yeah. And as far as I'm concerned, if you want to win, you better have some because you have to have some kind of profound knowledge. Yeah. So. Yeah. And if you buy everything, you lose that knowledge. Yeah. And you lose it quickly, especially if you send it to Japan, mm -hmm. or sorry, to China. Mm -hmm.